Hello and welcome to Question Time. I'm Omkar Goswami. When my guest finished his master's from MIT and came back in 1972 to join the company which he now runs, its turnover was $1.3 million. Today, the group turnover of that company, the consolidated turnover of that company, is $1.6 billion. It has 11 manufacturing facilities all over the world. Meet Baba Kalyani, Chairman and Managing Director of Bharat Forge. Baba, thanks for being on the show. Pleasure. I remember even much later when the only, you, it was a single unit company out of Mundhwa in the, not even the outskirts, on the other side of the railway line in Pune. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about those days. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> forging business in India, the component business in India in the 70s, was just about starting. Uh, automotive industry, if you look at early 70s, was quite nascent, quite small. It was you just had the ambassador, the ambassador and, and Fiat, the Fiat and the Tata. Vertically integrated, and Tata Tata vertically integrated. So the opportunity to do something uh, in this sector was quite limited. It was largely diesel engines, uh, agricultural, you know, uh, tractors. tractors and things like that. But then in the 80s came the first uh, wave of a new automotive industry, the Japanese OEMs, which came into India. And then, of course, came Maruti and, you know, the whole... Uh, yeah, but you, you weren't... I mean, this is the most interesting thing. When did you see the writing on the wall? Because for a long time, you were not into car forgings. You were mostly into heavier, heavier forgings for medium, heavy and... You know, commercial well, well, even today, a large portion of our business is towards large forging. I think our business with Pascar uh, worldwide is somewhere in the region of 17, 18 percent. Yeah. So when did you when did you see the change where there was a shift that you could see and therefore you would invest in making large forgings, crankshafts, the stuff that you do now? When did you see the change? You know, we saw it in the 80s, uh, in the mid 80s. And a little story to this. Hmm. Uh, you know, we were trying very hard uh, as we were getting successful in our business technically in the 70s, early 80s, to start exporting products. But nobody would believe that uh, India can make these products for the world market. I mean, we had a hard time convincing any OEM. Price was never an issue. Uh, and that was the time when we realized that you know, we just need to change our way we do things, change our whole business model, move into high technology, make our business uh, very technology focused. And that's when we really made those big decisions to invest uh, into. Yeah, so I remember, I remember your first major expansion that took place uh, around 1999, 2000. No, when no, it was 1990. No, that was the first. That I don't remember at all. But I'm talking of the one... The second expansion that took place in Mundhwa, which you increased capacities hugely. I mean, forging capacity and or, and the furnaces. You know, uh, in the in the early 90s, when we made our first move to uh, modernization, converting our business to a technology-led business. Uh, I mean, we were quite successful, not only in the domestic market but in the outside markets, and that really what prompted us to build in capacities and go and really create scale which will help us in the global marketplace. And, you know, it worked. I mean, it worked when, very when, well. When did you see, I'm just going back in time, you're still a single unit manufacturer. I have not yet come to our discussion on acquisitions. You're still a single unit manufacturer. When did you start seeing the export market pick up? Because even as a single unit manufacturer, you had got to a point where you were exporting quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, the mid-90s, when the first recession in the truck business hit India. And was that coincidental or was the export going to happen anyway? It was going to happen, but I think it got accelerated uh, by two, three years. Uh, and our investments got accelerated uh, by a couple of years. And I think it was a, you know, almost like a blessing in disguise going through those difficult times. The, uh, the, the mid-90s when the interest rates went up, there was the inflation yeah, in know, the India, market the automobile market yeah, went exactly, down. Exactly. And that's when Bharat Ford started doing much more exports. Let me take you a little fast forward to your, I mean, you were the first guy who kept on talking of dual shoring. And as soon as you started talking of it, you started talking of acquisitions. So take us through this, the history of this 
principle of dual shoring, and then through each of the acquisitions that you did from, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, between 2003 and 2005. Absolutely. You know, the products that we make are basically critical performance components in an automobile, whether it's car or trucks or, you know. Tell the, tell the viewers the products. We make crankshafts, uh, you know, rotating components that really power the engine. So it's the main component in an engine. And the performance of an engine really depends on that. We make uh, uh, chassis components uh, where safety of the vehicle depends on that, you know. Those are components that are never supposed to fail. Uh, you know, quality levels are extremely high. So these are the components we make. We don't make commodity parts. We don't make parts that everybody can make. And therefore, uh, to create a level of trust with our customers, especially in Europe, uh, we needed this concept of dual shoring. And the concept is very simple. All we said was, we will produce these products in Europe and in India, or in places like China. And clearly, you know, when you make it in India, you're going to be far more competitive cost-wise. And the choice is yours. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone. Faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free. NDTV.com slash apps.